My dad met Ashley nine months after my mom passed. He told me that they were actually married, not just dating. So her claim was that while she was pregnant with their daughter, he poisoned her through heavy metals. They disproved all of the allegations like every other time, but that started the real problems between Ashley and Doug. He's saying the neighbor came over, female neighbor. Mm -hmm. It was a domestic. She shot her husband. In Florida, the judge has denied defendant Ashley Benefield's stand your ground defense. Now, we brought you the two day hearing back in July. Ashley Benefield is accused of murdering her husband, Doug, in 2020. Now, they had separated and were embroiled in a bitter child custody battle. In his ruling, Judge Stephen White says the state has proven by clear and convincing evidence that the victim's homicide was not a singular act of necessary self-defense, but was instead the culmination of a lengthy concerted effort by the defendant to eliminate the victim from her life and the life of their child. And the defendant's efforts to enlist the assistance of law enforcement, child protective services, and the judicial system failed. She took matters into her own hands. That's the judge, folks. Now, after denying her stand your ground defense, the judge set a tentative trial date for November 29, 2023. The furthest, farthest? Farthest. All right. Case management I have right now is November 29th at 9 a.m. That should be fine. Check. November 29th. <clears throat> I don't have it on the board here. Uh, cause that is, I'm actually back up that week to judge Mercurio. So I try and keep those fairly light. My assumption is that you're just going to step off of that date as it gets closer, uh, until you get, get some sort of answer. Right. Yes, your honor. And, uh, maybe. and that date works for me. And the only conflict would be, I'd probably be in trial with you or someone. So we can handle that. Definitely. Yeah. If you just, I'm. At this point, I'm going to put it in my head. I'm just going to be getting steps from you all until we get some sort of response from the second DCA, and then we'll get it back on the calendar, depending on what their ruling is. Yes, Your Honor. We'll keep the court of praise. All right. So, Ms. Benefield, please stay in touch with your attorney. He'll let you know when you need to be back here in court before me. All right, still here to discuss Florida State Attorney Dave Arenberg and trial attorney Michelle Thomas. Michelle, I'll start with you. Some pretty stern words uh, in that uh, opinion by the judge. And, you know, it's not the first time. Other judges have rejected her claims of this guy being abusive and this guy not being a good father, trying to poison her, trying to say that he hurt her on various occasions. Kind of rejected it all in this one. What does this mean for the trial? You know, this is really tough for this defendant because she has a credibility issue. Her credibility has been attacked and compromised um, in various court proceedings. So the problem they're going to have is when they get to trial is trying to find a member of the jury who's not conversant or familiar with what any of these prior judges has said. So if any member of that jury pool watches court TV regularly, they're going to have heard and possibly been swayed um, by what this this judge's opinion was about the stand your ground defense because she's going to be allowed to reassert that defense at trial. But you have a judge saying that there's absolutely no credibility to it whatsoever. So that's going to be a significant hurdle for her when they get to trial. Yeah, no doubt. And it is a lower standard. And part of the problem here, Dave, is that um, there was a strategic error pointed out by the judge. What the defense did, they decided not to call any witnesses. They wanted the judge to rely on their motion for the stand your ground hearing. And the judge said, look, Look, there are, there's plenty of precedent that says that's not evidence. So they didn't put anyone on the stand. You would think they would put this defendant on the stand to tell her story for the judge to consider, but decided not to do that. I call that a pretty serious strategic error in this instance. Michael, if they had put the defendant on the stand, it, that could be used against her in her future trial. So as of now, because she did not take the stand, she could conceivably have a different defense at trial. She could actually say at trial that she wasn't the one who killed the victim. Someone else did or come up with some other cockamamie story. So I think she wanted to preserve a potential different defense at trial. Look, it, it is a lower standard. 
in this case, in a hearing like this, the prosecutors have to prove by clear and convincing evidence that she did not have a reasonable fear of her life. At trial, prosecutors have to show beyond a reasonable doubt. And I think they'll be able to do so just by the fact that she's been rejected so many times. She doesn't seem like a very credible person. And you've got to show that you were in reasonable th fear of your life at that moment, not a compilation of all bad behavior over the years that he was mentally abusive. And that gives you the right to just gun him down while he's helping you move. That's why her defense, I think, will lose that trial. Yeah, Michelle Thomas, that's really the sum total of their case. They've got a, a number of incidences where the guy did some weird things. He shot a gun into the ceiling. Uh, apparently, he punched a hole in a wall. He actually admitted to that. She claims he tried to poison him. Apparently, he was standing in her yard watching her house at various times. Again, whether they can get that in at trial is questionable, but I think Dave makes a great point. It's not about all those incidents. It's about what she was feeling at the moment, and that's going to be the tough part for this defense. I think it's really hard. And when you when you add to the backdrop of that, the custody dispute, the fact that she arguably hated this person, and that was evidenced by all the court, prior court proceedings against him, which sounds like a lot of them she lost, she's going to have a hard time trying to convince the jury that um, she was in fear in that moment when you look at the, the, the totality of the evidence and circumstances. So um, that's what the state's going to focus the jury on is what was happening in that moment because hating someone, not wanting them to be a part of you or your children's life doesn't give you the right to kill that person. And so I think that's what is going to be, you know, an issue for her at, at trial. Yeah, another issue for her is she told the doctor that they were seeing a child protective services uh, doctor that um, if things didn't work out she would have to take matters into her own hands so throw that in the bunch as well mm. I, I say she's gonna have to testify that's her only chance is to convince this jury that she was in fact in fear for her life she didn't do it at the hearing but you're right that probably made sense for her but I think she's gonna have to do it at trial